Hello and welcome to this edition of Political Capital here on Bloomberg TV India. This is the show where Delhi meets Bilal Street. I'm Vivek Law. The election dates are out and May 16th is the big day when we get the results of how India would have voted over nine phases in April and May. Today we put the focus on Maharashtra, which sends 48 seats to the Lok Sabha, the second largest after Uttar Pradesh. This is a state where the Congress and BJP both have strong regional allies on each side. There's also been a lot of speculation in the last few weeks on whether Sharad Pawar will stay with the Congress and the BJP's attempt to bring Raj Thackeray's MNS back into its fold. We will be joined by Sujata Anandan, political editor, Hindustan Times, and Siddharth Bhatia, senior journalist and commentator. But before we hear from them, let's tell you what the major players in Maharashtra have been saying in the lead up to the elections. When I spoke to the BJP's Nitin Gadkari last week, he said there's no confusion between the BJP and the Shiv Sena. BJP or Sena may have to sit on distribution. Okay. Hamara Priya Sirhega. कि कांग्रेस और राष्ट्रवादी कांग्रेस के विरोध में जो मतदान है वो डिवाइड ना हो जाए वो उसका फायदा डिवीजन का फायदा कांग्रेस और एनसीपी को न हो ताकि जितने लोगों को साथ जोड़कर हम काम कर सकते हैं वो करने का हम प्रयास करेंगे अगेन मैं रिपोर्ट्स से ही जा रहा हूं गडकरी साहब लेकिन एक रिपोर्ट थी कि दो बहुत अहम मुद्दों पर आप में और आपके जो एक कॉलीग हैं महाराष्ट्र स्टेट के मिस्टर मुंडे बहुत दो डाइवर्जेंट व्यूज आए चाहे वो टोल का इशू हो चाहे वो श्री शरद पवार जी का इशू हो तो क्या कोई वहाँ पे गड़बड़ है कि आप सब एक साथ हैं मुझे लगता है ये इंटरप्रेट करने का तरीका अलग अलग हो सकता है महाराष्ट्र में टोल रोड पहला मैंने शुरू किया है जी मैं उस पर आऊँगा दूसरा ऐसा हुआ कि जब टोल एबोलिश करने की बात आई जब मुंडे साहब ने उसको कहा है तो मैंने इतना ही कहा है कि ये एक लाख दस हजार करोड़ रुपये लगभग इसके कारण कॉम्पेंसेशन देना पड़ सकता है तो और ये जब तक मुंडे जैसे सीनियर नेताओं ने जब कहा है तो इसके लिए कोई नया सॉल्यूशन, इकोनॉमिक सॉल्यूशन उनके पास होगा वैसे व्यवहारिक दृष्टि से ये कठिन है पर आप निश्चित रूप से वो इसके बारे में बता पाएंगे अब उसके बारे में इन्होंने गलत गलत इंटरप्रिटेशन किए शरद पवार के बारे में ऐसा है कि हम एन का विस्तार करना चाहते हैं अभी फिलहाल न भाजपा और शिवसेना मिलकर हम महाराष्ट्र में लड़ रहे हैं तो कांग्रेस और एन के साथ अलायंस करने का सवाल ही नहीं उठता जब पूछने वाले ऐसा सवाल पूछते हैं कि भाई इसके बाद लोकसभा के चुनाव के बाद क्या होगा तो मैंने कहा अभी तो कुछ नहीं होगा पर चुनाव के बाद अगर एन का एक्सपेंशन होगा तो एक्सपेंशन करने की हमारी कोशिश रहेगी उस समय शरद पवार आ सकते हैं क्या तो आ सकते हैं तो उस समय हम कोशिश करेंगे यही बात कही इसमें कोई कॉन्ट्रडिक्शन है ऐसा मुझे लगता नहीं कभी कभी लगातार कुछ बातों को लेकर मीडिया में ऐसे विषय चलते रहते हैं क्या आपको लगता है गडकरी साहब के महाराष्ट्र एक बहुत ही गेम चेंजर हो सकता है इस बार क्योंकि नॉट ओनली इज इट द सेकंड बिगेस्ट स्टेट देखिए महाराष्ट्र में बिल्कुल आप एक एक एंटी इनकम्बेंसी को लेके जा रहे हैं आप इस इलेक्शंस में क्या आपको लगता है कि वहां पे सबसे बड़ा सरप्राइज फैक्टर हो सकता है कि आपको ज्यादा सीटें आ सकती है देखिए महाराष्ट्र में फोर्टी पार्लियामेंट की सीट्स हैं और हमारा प्रयास ये है कि हम कम से कम पैंतीस सीटें इस बार जीते हैं और इसलिए कांग्रेस के अपोज में जो कांग्रेस और एन के अपोज में जो वोटर है उसको यूनाइट करने की हम सिंसियरली कोशिश करेंगे आप दोनों का टुगेदर 35 सीट्स का इरादा प्लान है निश्चित रूप से हम जीतेंगे इन दिसंबर महाराष्ट्र चीफ मिनिस्टर पृथ्वीराज चौहान टोल मी दैट इट वाज नेचुरल फॉर द कांग्रेस एंड एनसीपी टू स्पार ओवर अ फ्यू इश्यूज So we fight the national and the state elections together. We fight local elections because we need to, to keep identities of two parties at the grassroots levels. So we fight cooperation elections separately. We fight local bodies elections, and when you fight against each other, so the state exchange. elections and the national, you will you're saying Lok Sabha and the state elections will be together. We That's always fight true. together, and uh, of course, uh, for right now the challenge is Lok Sabha elections. We will fight together. There's the issue about. A number of seats that we each uh, fight. Any pre-poll alliance, this issue always comes up, and we'll resolve that and go ahead. You don't believe there is an incumbency problem? Well, our government has been, been in power for, for 15, while, years. 15 years. Yes, true. Uh, but point is again, I always make this point that in Maharashtra people tried Shiv Sena BJP government in 95 to 99, and they got so fed up that they had never elected the BJP Shiv Sena government ever again. 
Neither in 1999 they defeated them, 2004, 2009. It was always a Congress-led government. And same thing happened in Delhi after Bajpayee's stint of six years. People have gone back to Congress. And I think, I strongly feel that they will continue to back Congress, Congress-led government, both in Delhi as right. in... Despite the volatility in Congress-NCP ties, senior NCP leader Supriya Sule told me in November that her party would like to continue its alliance with the Congress, which has lasted over a decade. We have been an ally with the Congress for the last 10 years in the centre and 15 years in Maharashtra. We've had a fairly good relationship. We would like to continue it. And we are hoping because I think eventually, I think it's not just about dreams and aspirations about oneself. When we are in a political party, we want to give a stable government to the nation and to the state. So everything, look, we've managed to survive together well for 15 years. I see a lot of things in media which sometimes don't necessarily reflect in day-to-day -day working. There's a little bit of gossip, little bit of teasing, little bit of things like that. But I don't see the apple cart being total. I mean, I personally feel that's okay. There have been some issues undoubtedly. It's like a marriage. And everything your spouse does, you don't necessarily always approve or like. So just because you flag it, that doesn't mean there's trouble in paradise. I'm now joined by Sujata Anandan of the Hindustan Times and senior journalist Siddharth Bhatia. Thank you very much, both of you, for coming by here on Bloomberg TV. Sujata, let me come to you first. How are you reading the mood right now across Maharashtra as far as these Lok Sabha elections are concerned? You know, I would say although the election commission has just announced the dates, I would say it's still uh, still too early because the campaigns have not taken off in right earnest, and uh, all the uh, all the names of the candidates is not in the nominations have not been filed, so it's a bit too early. Still, I would say uh, that um, uh, both the uh, both the main political formations, the Congress NCP and the Shiv Sena BJP, they are house they are a house divided on both sides. You know, the Shiv Sena has its own internal problems. It has problems with the MNS, it also has problems with the BJP and the Congress and NCP are the tweedledum, tweedledee of these uh, elections and uh, they're like an old married couple, you know, I mean, you know, they keep, uh, they, they can't stand each other anymore, but, you know, they keep fighting yet, they keep staying together out of compulsion. So it'll depend upon how uh, the campaign pans out and uh, what the list of the candidates is, what the competition is. Siddharth, uh, the more recent developments that we saw were pertaining to the entire talk about Nitin Gatkari reaching out to Araj Thakare, and that's led to a lot of uh, unpleasantness, if one were to call it that, uh, between Shiv Sena and BJP. How are you seeing the situation evolving as far as Maharashtra is concerned? Do you believe that's a small issue and they would have tied it over it by now and they will get back together to fight? No, I think that's a very significant issue because the, while it is uh, known that the Shiv Sena and the BJP at the lo local level have always had, uh, you know, a prickly relationship, uh, the Shiv Sena thinks that with 11 seats it should be taken more seriously. The BJP wants to move on in the Uddhav Thakre phase to find new allies. Uh, while that has been there, this is a very brazen uh, kind of a step that Mr. Gatkari has taken. He's gone and actually met Mr. Raj Thakre to appeal to him to step down and not fight. And that is going to create ripples uh, far beyond his own immediate uh, party because, and it has already begun creating ripples as you can see, because it signifies several things. It signifies that they are not confident of a wave. That's a very important thing. The, it also uh, sends a very drastic signal to the Shiv Sena. Look, we've got other... Uh, uh, possibilities in case you start uh, getting too big for your boots because there's no secret that Mr. Gatkari and Mr. Udhav Thakri don't see eye to eye. And the third thing is, it is also telling uh, the voters that, uh, you know, uh, it's quite possible that, you know, the BJP may not uh, be able to do it on its own. So what is the signal that goes down to the Kada? So I think this is very significant. On for Mr. Raj Thakre, the dilemma, and it's a serious dilemma, though he can sit and say, everyone wants me. The serious dilemma is he's got to produce candidates who are worthy of fighting the Lok Sabha elections. Not a question of just being a spoiler. But his eye is on the Maharashtra elections later in uh, 2014. So he's going to start thinking, is this going to help me or is this not going to help me if I waste my energies, resources, etc. Now, 
or should I be make, uh, planning a future kind of alignment with uh, others? Because his uh, performance so far in the last nine years has not been spectacular. So uh, it's, it's going to create repercussions over the next few weeks. I think Mr. Raj Thakri is going to announce in three or four days what his intentions are, and then we shall see where it goes. But so far, the Shiv Sena has let it be known that it is really, really very upset at what's going on. Hmm. Sujata, so all doesn't seem to be well within BJP either, isn't it? You have uh, two very senior leaders of that state, uh, Mr. Gadkari and Mr. Munde, almost uh, publicly coming out to give an impression that they're not on the same page. Well, they How are, are you seeing the prospects of BJP? They are uh, indeed not on the same page, and this is not a new phenomenon. This has been going on uh, for a very long time. In fact, even in 2009, Mr. Gadkari and Mr. Munde were not on the same page, and uh, they really do not get along with each other. And and that is why I said, you know, I mean, there are uh, uh, within the Congress and the NCP, yes, there are uh, there are problems, but within the Sena and the BJP, there are a lot of problems. You know, I mean, the BJP, the leaders do not get along with each other. In the Shiv Sena too, the leaders do not get along with each other and the Shiv Sena and the BJP, the new generation, they do not see eye to eye. You know, so there, there def definitely is and I agree with Siddharth when he said that, you know, this uh, this meeting with Raj Thakre is an admission that, you know, I mean, there is, uh, uh, it's, it's not going to be a cakewalk for the BJP or the Sena because if there is truly a wave in favor of the BJP or even Narendra Modi in, uh, in Maharashtra or in India, why do you need somebody not to divide your votes? You know, I mean, you know, th that wave should sweep everybody under the carpet and, you know, I mean, go on and uh, capture the Lok Sabha. But, uh, but I think uh, I'm, I'm not so sure at this stage it'll take another few weeks, you know, for the whole thing to crystallize. But I think it could have done a lot more damage than it helped the BJP prospects. You wrote in a recent uh, article, Sujata, you said uh, it was headlined, Is the Modi magic wearing off? Yes. When we talk specifically about Maharashtra, which is a very important and a big state, yes. uh, are you not seeing any kind of uh, wave or any kind of uh, an opportunity, therefore, uh, for these two, that is the BJP and the Shiv Sena, to be able to get 30 or 35 odd seats kind of a wave? I think 30 to 35 is a rather ambitious number. I would uh, equally divide it, you know. I mean, at this stage, I would say 20, 20 to either formation. Congress, NCP and uh, Shiv Sena, BJP. 30 to 35 is uh, far too ambitious for, uh, for either, uh, either side. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not sure that will really happen. And Maharashtra, yes, it is the second largest state after Uttar Pradesh. And I'm sure Mr. Modi wants about uh, at least 40 seats from Maharashtra, and which is what even the Shiv Sena claims that they're going to sweep 40 out of 48. But how? Where? Um, uh, and I don't think so because uh, Shiv Sena also is having a problem with regard to its candidates. The BJP may not have so many problems, but there is also uh, there is also a, an essential Maharashtra uh, Maharashtra versus uh, Marathi versus Gujarati divide in uh, Maharashtra, which Mr. Modi has not been able to address. In fact, you know I think he managed to widen the uh, ga uh, ga gap a bit because if you recall, Raj Thakre after the uh, Mr. Modi's uh, December. Eileen uh, in Bombay had said that, you know, he thinks of himself only as a Gujarat chief minister. He doesn't think of himself as a prime ministerial candidate. I mean, that was that was just a small uh, uh, peep into, you know, what the Maharashtrian mind really thinks. So I don't think it's really going to be so easy uh, for uh, uh, the BJP uh, to overcome this. And it is not really going to be easy for the Shiv Sena as it was in Bal Thakre's time. We'll take a quick one minute break. We come back and discuss more details of what's really going on in Maharashtra with Sujata Anandan and Siddharth Party. Back in just a minute. Welcome back. We are discussing Maharashtra and joining me Sujata Anandan and Siddharth Bhatia. Siddharth, uh, Sujata doesn't give the BJP Shiv Sena combined anywhere close to the 35, 40 that they're hoping for. How do you see the numbers playing out in terms of, and first of all, also the point that I raised with Sujata and she responded to that was about the fact that is there at all some kind of a Modi effect in Maharashtra as well? Uh, 
you know, Maharashtra is a very peculiar kind of state. Every state has its peculiarities. But Maharashtra has um, old, entrenched, uh, um, grassroot uh, kind of uh, systems. So, for example, in the western Maharashtra, Maratwada kind of region, um, uh, in the western Maharashtra region, these cooperative societies make a big difference. Now, most cooperative societies are in the hands of the NCP and the Congress. So, these are now going on for generations, etc. So, the Shiv Sena uh, has never been able to penetrate uh, beyond, uh, say, Bombay, Thane, Kalyan, and a little bit in Nasik and Pune. And it's not been able to penetrate there after 30 years of being in existence. So, you have these, uh, now the BJP has certain strength. And Bombay city uh, has an extremely different dynamic. Very few uh, states have a big city like this with a completely, totally different cosmopolitan voting dynamic. So going from 20, which is the total that the Congress, the Shiv Sena and the BJP have at the moment, 11 and 9, to 35 is a very tall order. Now that has happened in the past, in the Congress time, because the Congress has seen two waves. Uh, 71 and uh, 1984, but uh, we don't see any wave here in this state. The reasons are many. The fault line is, of course, one of them, but structures are the other thing. And without organizational structure, suddenly to dream and fantasize about going from uh, 20 to 35 when you have not been able to go beyond 20 for a long time is, I think, of an extremely tall order. Uh, there has not been any kind of visibility of the wave. Mr. Modi's effect in, let's say, Nasik, Yavatma, Aurangabad, unknown, completely is an unknown kind of thing. So I'm not dismissing him. I think he has galvanized the party and the cadre. But uh, whether that system and support system exists on the ground to take advantage of that, very difficult to say. I think that there may be a certain fall in the Congress's... Uh, um, and the NCP is total tally because they are about 25 now. They may fall a bit. The BJP may get an advantage of one or two out of that. And the RPI may help it get something more. But I seriously doubt that even they would cross 30. I would seriously doubt that in Maharashtra. And as you said right in the beginning, Vivek, mm -hmm. Maharashtra is a critical state with 48 seats. Everyone focuses on UP and Bihar, but Maharashtra has got 48 seats against you. Bihar's 40. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> right. So, Jata, we are reading increasingly a lot about uh, Raju Shetty's party, you know, the SSS, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is that something worth taking note of? Do you believe that it could be a force to reckon with in some pockets at least? Well, uh, yes, in some pockets, and it certainly can be a spoiler, and 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 and, and uh, not to ignore the fact that you know he did uh, damage the NCP in the 2009 elections. You know, I mean, Pawar's calculations were upset uh, by, uh, by him, but. Um, you know, I don't know how much that influence will extend beyond uh, one or two seats. Um, I, I, I'm not quite sure. Maybe in Western Maharashtra, maybe one seat, maybe two seats, you know, I mean, which is, which is good enough even for him. But uh, not, not much beyond that, you know, there are most, uh, he is more in the region of a spoiler than anything, uh, than anything else. And I don't know whether the Shiv Sena will really uh, gain by that. Though definitely the NCP will be hurt. Hmm. The big uh, leader out of there, Sharad Pawar, how do you see him and his party performing, Sujata? See, NCP is not really on the uh, on the kind of strong wicket that you know Sharad Pawar would like us all to believe. You know, and, but all said and done, at the moment for the Congress and the NCP, he is the only campaigner. He is the only leader in that camp. You know, who knows the state like the back of his hand. And uh, um, uh, even even if you include uh, Modi into the BJP Sena campaign uh, 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 list. Uh, I don't think anybody understands Maharashtra better than Sharad Pawar does. And uh, he may be aging, he may not be too well at the moment, but uh, he is still the best uh, bet and the uh, great big hope for both the Congress and the NCP. But NCP, uh, 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 NCP too doesn't have candidates. The peculiarity of this election is that, you know, practically every political party here 
simply does not have the kind of heavyweight candidates that they would uh, want. They have been compelled, you know, to ask at least one minister, Chagan Bujbal, to uh, contest from Nashik. He will be contesting in the place of his nephew, who is a sitting MP, and uh, they, uh, they might be attempting to persuade a couple more to do that, you know, because they do need heavyweight candidates. Um, and and um, uh, Mr. Pawar definitely needs uh, a lot more than the eight seats uh, he had won in the 2009 elections to be able to take further his ambitions in, uh, in New Delhi. Uh, I do not agree with Nitin Gadkari that Mr. Pawar will join the NDA uh, later in a post poll formation, but definitely Mr. Pawar, uh, I'm sure and in fact I am convinced is eyeing a third front uh, coalition government and hoping you know I mean that he gets a substantial number of seats from Maharashtra to be able to play a key role in that formation. Siddharth uh, do you believe uh, that he is going to be able to do better than the last time round or do you believe that he is a figure uh, whose best is over? Well, as you saw in the last few days, Mr. Bujbal's supporters are extremely upset that he's been made to resign his ministerial post to contest uh, for the MP ship because uh, quite honestly, uh, uh, nobody really wants to go to the uh, uncertain parliament uh, as, and sacrifice what they already have. So I think his is a house in turmoil. Uh, he at best uh, will be able to get uh, eight maybe one or two more, but quite possibly one or two less. And if he has got uh, his eyes on the third front, which is a perpetual hope of his in the last, say, 20 odd years, uh, he'll be uh, have to contend with the likes of uh, Madam Jayalalitha, who will probably come in 28 or 30, Mamta Banerjee, and even, I would argue, Biju, uh, Naveen Patnaik, all of whom will have, uh, you know, solid uh, kind of portfolios, as it were, uh, where they come with all these numbers and then they say uh, that this is what we can put on the table. Now, I want something, a uh, pound of flesh. So, I think with eight, uh, Mr. Pawar is a perpetual third front hoper. Uh, but with eight, I doubt, uh, you know, one more, one less. I doubt whether he's got much of a, he's going to have much of a say in the final list. However, I must just add here that the third front is also at this stage a very, very amorphous kind of body. Now, he's got great relations with everybody, including the left, and uh, might just be uh, the surprise that somebody springs out of a hat. But with eight seats, I seriously doubt he will have much of a say except to just contribute his uh, numbers. So, Jata, if uh, you were to sum up the situation, would you say that uh, while on the one hand there is an anti-incumbency, there is uh, the fact that, you know, the state, uh, this current establishment has been there for 15 years and there could be a wave of uh, wanting a change, but the opposition is perhaps not in a position or capable enough to take advantage of that. Is that the way you would sum it up? Yes, that is exactly how I would sum it up because, uh, you know, this is this is not a situation happening today. In fact, 2009 should have been a good year for the Shiv Sena and the BJP to take on the Congress and the NCP and defeat them. But the Bal Thakri was still alive at that point of time, but they still could not get their act together. And uh, they came in, uh, they came to power accidentally in 1999 in Maharashtra. And in 1996, they won a lot. Uh, uh, a lot of seats, 1998 and 1999 in parliament too, riding on the Hindutva wave. But you know, in the absence of a wave, and I doubt seriously if there is a Narendra Modi wave, uh, particularly in Maharashtra, you know, I mean, uh, uh, in the absence of that kind of a wave, I don't think uh, the Shiv Sena and the BJP, they're too fragmented internally too to be able to, and even Mr. Modi is not able to cement the divisions in uh, within the BJP, within the Shiv Sena and between the Shiv Sena and the BJP. And it is essentially because of the lack of a credible opposition that, um, you know, this uh, anti-incumbency doesn't work against the Congress NCP. And despite being so poor in performance, the Congress NCP continue to win elections for the past 15 years. We leave it there. Sujata Nandan, Siddharth Bhatia, thank you very much, both of you, for coming by and sharing your thoughts with our viewers here on Bloomberg TV India.